Sometime in the future, the internal SSD on your Mac is going to die. That's right, no matter what you do or how carefully you look after your Mac, the SSD will stop working eventually. The only question is, how long will it last before it dies? Well, the truth is that you probably don't need to worry about it, and in this video I'll explain why, and also include some helpful tips on how to extend the life of your SSD, so make sure you watch until the end. I'll also include a link in the description to an article on the Created Tech website with all of the sources and references used during this video. And if you have any questions or want to know more, make sure you join our Discord using the link below. Okay, so why is this such a big problem in the first place? Well, a few years ago, Apple changed their design process for new Macs. Previously, you could open up a Mac and replace the internal SSD or hard drive if something went wrong. But unfortunately for modern Macs, the SSD is actually soldered onto the logic board and cannot be removed. So if it dies, your Mac is essentially turned into a big useless paperweight and you're at the mercy of Apple as to whether or not they will fix it for you. Okay, so let's talk about the actual SSD inside your Mac. Now, having a basic knowledge of how SSD technology works is very important, so make sure you watch this entire section. The SSD inside your Mac uses technology called NAND flash memory, which is a type of non-volatile storage technology that does not require power to retain data. NAND flash memory has been used for years and it's all around us. For example, in your mobile phone, a USB flash drive, or somewhat more recently, soldered to your Mac's logic board. Don't believe me? Well, here's a picture of an SD card and a USB drive. Can you see the little NAND flash memory chips? Now let's take a look inside Apple's latest computer, the M1 Pro MacBook. Look familiar? Now, there are actually several different types of NAND flash memory, and they all offer different levels of performance and endurance characteristics at a range of price points. I won't go into detail on these different types though, as that's outside the scope of this video. All you need to know is that NAND flash memory works by storing little ones or zeros in cells, and when combined, this actually forms your data. An image or a text file, or even a video, it's all constructed of millions or billions of little ones and zeros all contained on tiny cells within the memory chip. But there's a little problem. Each of those cells has a finite lifespan. That is, there's only a certain amount of times that cell can be written to before it starts to become unreliable. For example, think of writing on a piece of paper using a pencil. If I write my name and then erase it using an eraser, that doesn't really do much, right? But what if I repeat this process 10 times, or 100 times, or even a thousand times? Eventually, the surface of the paper is going to be too stained, ripped, or thin for me to continue writing on, and it will be unusable. Flash memory is the same. Each time a cell is written to, it becomes slightly more worn down. This is known as PE or program arrays cycles. As the memory cells in the drive get used and reused, eventually this will result in slower response times, corrupted data, and potentially total drive failure. It's actually kind of similar to the way the battery on your MacBook degrades over time. If you wanna watch a video I made on that topic, and learn how to maximize the lifespan of your battery, I will link that video as well. Now, back to SSDs. There are a couple of technologies available that can slow the degradation process of flash memory, such as trim or over-provisioning. But to keep this video relatively short and compact, I'll focus on the most important one. SSD NAND storage devices have an onboard controller that can spread the writes over all of the available cells to ensure the cells wear evenly to maximize lifespan. This is a process called wear leveling. Wear leveling can be explained with a simple diagram. 
Take a look at this one. Devices without wear leveling write to the same cells over and over again until those cells become worn and eventually unusable, which are the red cells in the example. If you introduce wear leveling, however, new data being written is spread out across the entire chip to cells with the least amount of usage. This whole process ensures that the cells wear evenly and keeps your SSD in good condition for as long as possible. Since this process spreads new writes over all of the available cells, it makes sense that the more cells you have, the longer your SSD will last, right? And you'd be correct. Take a 256 gigabyte SSD, for example, and compare it to a one terabyte SSD. The larger one terabyte SSD has four times more storage capacity, which means it has roughly four times more cells. So every time you write new data, it can be spread out across a much larger surface area, reducing degradation of individual cells. So a great tip is if you're wanting to keep your Mac for a long time, consider upgrading the SSD from 256 gigabytes to 512 gigabytes or even one terabyte. And no matter what size SSD you have, you should always keep at least 10 to 15% of the total capacity of your SSD free at all times. The SSD needs room to write new data and you don't want to restrict it to only a tiny number of cells. For example, an SSD with only 2% capacity remaining. This will cause the new data to be constantly written to the same small number of cells and they will wear out and die much faster. Okay, so now we know how SSDs work and how individual cells can and will degrade over time and with use. But still, we want to know how long the entire SSD will last before it dies. Now, there are many factors that contribute to the rate of cell degradation within an SSD, but the biggest factor is something called TBW, or total bytes written. TBW is a number expressed in terabytes that your SSD can write before the memory cells within it may begin to degrade. Now, this doesn't mean your SSD will just die once it exceeds its TBW rating. It just means that the possibility of data loss and entire drive failure increases. Although, like any piece of hardware, your SSD can still randomly die at any point, even if it hasn't reached its TBW rating. The good news is that this is very rare, so I wouldn't worry about it. Now, many manufacturers use TBW as a rating to guarantee the lifespan of the SSD for warranty purposes. For example, many 256 gigabyte SSDs have a TBW of 150 terabytes. This means that the manufacturer guarantees that their SSD can write at least 150 terabytes of data before any issues might occur. Likewise, if you opt for a larger SSD, for example, a two terabyte model, the TBW usually scales accordingly to 1200 terabytes, for example. Now, it's important to note here that the TBW ratings assigned to SSDs by manufacturers are usually extremely conservative. An SSD often can and will blow right through its rated TBW rating and continue to work without issues for a very long time. For example, a technology site called 3D News performed an experiment in 2018 and tested 50 SSDs with a capacity of 250 gigabytes. As you can see, almost every single drive blew past the standard 150 terabytes TBW rating, with most drives exceeding the 150 terabyte figure by more than five times. In fact, several drives were able to write more than five petabytes of data before failing. A petabyte is 1,000 terabytes, so that's over 5,000 terabytes of data. Other experiments saw similar results. For example, this one by techreport.com, where all of the 250 gigabyte SSDs they tested achieved at least double their specified TBW ratings, with several, once again, lasting for over two petabytes or 2,000 terabytes of writes before failure. 
And just in case you're still not convinced, here's another experiment. So what about the SSDs Apple uses for their Macs? What are their TBW ratings? Well, unfortunately, Apple does not publicly disclose information regarding the SSDs they use. Companies like iFixit have done teardowns of various Mac devices, but they found that the SSDs Apple use are different in each model of Mac and do not feature any kind of brand logo or identification. So let's look at some premium SSDs available on the market, which are usually rated for very high TBWs, like the Seagate Firecuda 530, where the TBW for their 500 gigabyte SSD is 640 terabytes, or double what typical 500 gigabyte SSDs are rated at. So we can assume that the TBW ratings of Apple devices are at least the following, but very possibly double that or more. So let's do a little experiment. Assuming you have a 256 gigabyte SSD in your Mac, what kind of lifespan can you expect? Well, let's start with the absolute minimum. Using the 150 terabyte TBW, that will allow you to write 50 gigabytes every single day for 8.2 years until you'll hit that 150 terabyte rating. And 50 gigabytes every single day, 365 days a year for 8.2 years straight is a lot of data and I doubt you'll get anywhere close to that. By the way, if you're interested in seeing how much data your SSD has already written or how much data you write each day, I will link a video in the description and also in the top right corner showing you how. So make sure you check that out. But don't forget, just because you hit that 150 terabyte rating, that doesn't mean that's the end of your drive. Remember that 3D News experiment on 50 different 256 gigabyte SSDs where almost all drives exceeded that 150 TBW rating by a factor of at least five before failing? So let's recalculate. That's 50 gigabytes a day, every day, for exactly 41 years until your drive will potentially die. That is, if both your computer and you are still alive in 41 years time. Taking it one step further, assuming you triple your usage to 150 gigabytes a day, that's still roughly 14 years. And again, remember that a lot of drives in that 3D News experiment didn't just go five times longer than their rated TBW, they went 20 times longer. So I think it's safe to say that you don't need to worry about your SSD failing anytime soon. As I've shown in this video, you'll be able to write several hundred terabytes to even the smallest capacity SSDs before they stop working. And even if you're someone writing hundreds of gigabytes per day, which is very rare, you'll still probably get 10 years out of the SSD. 